What's up, everyone? Jason Gilbo here with Nick Tasso, breaking down our favorite stacks for tonight's slate. I uh, got a big 14-game slate. You and I both on the same stacks, and I think that has a lot to do with, you know, the pitching that's going tonight. It's a lot stronger than it was last night, and even some of these bad arms, they're not kind of stack-worthy enough to really fire away. Yeah, it's really hard to find uh, some stacks on this slate. Uh, it was really tough to find even three, to be honest with you. I think there's a couple of no-brainers, which we're going to talk about. But after that, it, it's tough, and a lot of them are going to probably just be one-offs because, like you said, the pitching is pretty good on this slate. Um, selecting pitchers, though, is going to be tough because a lot of their prices are kind of up there. Uh, however, trying to get hitters and stacking them just doesn't match for uh, this kind of slate. No, it definitely doesn't. Um, one thing I was you know, kind of pleasantly surprised with is Cleveland's pricing uh, going up against Bartolo Colon. I mean – it, DraftKings, I mean, no one's over, you know, 4,500. Um, and also I think the addition of Jay Bruce is, is something that's going to be huge for this stack because, you know, before we had, you know, Carl Santana and Carl Sonia kind of had to make that choice. Now it's a little bit easier with Bruce hitting fits. So um, Jason Kipnis is back. I mean, he, he's super cheap on both sites. Obviously he hasn't done a lot this year, but um, when you look at Bartolo Colon, I mean, you know, 367 Woolwood to lefties, 390 Woolwood to righties. Uh, hard contact is at 42% to left-handers. I mean, you know, when we're talking Lindor, Kipnis, Ramirez, Jay Bruce is four out of the five being lefties. I mean, there's just tremendous upside with this team. Yeah, I know Bartolo Colon has had a, a decent street, uh, stretch the last few games, but I agree with you. This Cleveland team should really do a number on him. Um, there's so many guys like Lindor and and Carnacion, and I, we have, like you said, Bruce, that could just do a lot of damage against uh, – our friend Bartolo. So I am not uh, thrilled um, with Bartolo's success lately. So I think it's going to kind of all blow up here. Yeah. I mean, if you stacked, you know, like I did last time out when he played Milwaukee, I mean, it was definitely a letdown. Um, if that happens again, I think it's time for me to just turn off MLB and get ready for NFL because I don't want to live in a world where Bartolo Colon's throwing seven scoreless innings of back-to-back -back starts. Uh, no, I agree with you. That's pretty uh, silly. But on the good note, um, football is right around the corner, even uh, preseason, so you could do that. It's true. It's very well. I could dive into WNBA if I want to. Preseason, just get real into those real degenerate sports. Yeah, have fun with that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's go to Los Angeles. Um you got Miguel Gonzalez taking on, uh, taking on Los Angeles on the road. Um, Dodgers right around five and a half run total. Um, this is a team that, you know, faced actually Miguel Gonzalez a couple of starts ago, and, and Gonzalez got the better of them. Um, I, I just like this team too much here to kind of shy away. They're on the expensive side. Um, their prices kind of rival cores in terms of, of one-offs. Um, but you just look at Miguel Gonzalez. I mean, big fly ball pitcher. He's – you know, struggled on the road this year, um, which is kind of odd because you expect him to struggle at home. But there's major home run regression coming. Um, there's a ton of power in this lineup. I mean, Seager, Turner, Bellinger, Grandal, Chris Taylor, I mean, have all been hitting the ball well. Um, you know, most of those guys over 200 ISO against righties. Yeah, absolutely. All those guys are definitely in play. Um, I wouldn't even mind throwing in Jock Peterson, but he kind of stinks. Uh, so kind of just throw them in there. Bellinger is on a good little clip right now. Seven, uh, uh, seven of his past eight games, he has at least one hit, and he has a lot of multi-hit games in that span too. Uh, like you said, Seager's good as well. Turner hits right as well. So it, it looks like it's going to be a bad game for um, our friend Gonzalez. And going on that, since he did pitch sort of well against him last time, typically second time around hitters after seeing a pitcher, um, they get a better idea and, typically can do a little bit more against him the next time. Yeah, and you look at Gonzalez, I mean, fly ball pitcher, he doesn't miss bats, 39% uh, ground ball rate, 12.7% uh, strikeout rate. Um, you know, you look at some of these guys, I mean, Bellinger, Grendahl, they can strike out a little bit more than usual just because they're kind of uh, younger, inexperienced bats. But um, when you get a pitcher who doesn't miss a lot, I think it tends to be easier when you're rostering guys like Bellinger. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if Gonzalez has a good game, and Cologne has a good game, then I think I'll be out for uh, MLB the rest of the year. <laughs> I need both those things to happen. Yeah, no, I'm definitely with you. Um, we're going to go to Rogers Center. Uh, you like the Tampa Bay side of things, which I think is, I mean, excellent value tonight across the board um, because they're cheap. And one, 
they've been struggling um, over the last month or so. I mean, that offense that had you know a really hot start to the year, they kind of trailed off. But um, this is a spot where I feel like it's kind of boomer bust on both sides. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not super thrilled by uh, Tampa Bay in this game, but I wanted to be a little different than you. I didn't want to go all three and three. So it's kind of why I like Tampa Bay here. Marco Estrada has pitched a little bit better recently, but he still has struggled all year at home. Um, and he's just going to face a lot of lefties with due to Morrison, uh, Dickerson, and uh, Steven Souza is just phenomenal against righties, uh, believe it or not. So I definitely like these guys a little bit. Like you said, they've all kind of regressed uh, a good amount, which is a little uh, nerve wracking, but they get a good ballpark here. So hopefully things turn around. Yeah, I, I think they're one of those ones where if I'm building multiple lineups, if I'm building more than five lineups, then I take a shot on them because I can kind of see taking shots on both Marco Estrada and this Rays offense because it just seems to be so hit or miss for both of them. Yeah, absolutely. The thing I, um, that always scares me about Estrada is just he's a fly ball pitcher a lot, and um, sometimes he's able to harness that a little bit better. But sometimes at Roger Center, he does kind of give up home runs. Yeah, and, you know, we look at, obviously, you said over his last few games, I mean, he's actually been pretty solid. But, you know, digging deeper into his numbers, I mean, it's not like he's been tremendously better where, um, you know, he's still going up a ton of fly balls, a ton of loud outs. So um, it's not like he's just going to be a guy who's a shutdown ace going forward. Yeah, in the middle of the year, he was absolutely atrocious. Um, there was a long stretch of starts where he just wasn't doing anything. And uh, he always has that potential because he, he just doesn't look like uh, what he used to a few years ago. No, no, like you said, I mean, yeah, a April and May, he was really strong. June, July, awful. And then August so far, he's, he hasn't been bad. So um, he's just been one of those streaky pitchers this year. Yeah. So uh, I do like the Jays on the other side here. Um, this is a team that's been, you know, obviously we've kind of avoided stacking for maybe the last few months. Um, Josh Donaldson back, and he actually looks back and healthy now. He's been crushing the ball over the last few weeks, um, you know, He's always a standout option against lefties, but you look at guys like Justin Smoke. I mean, 492 Woba, 303 ISO. Um, Steve Pierce, Kevin Pillar both have over a 200 ISO against lefties. Um, the only one that actually isn't good against lefties is Jose Bautista, but leading off at his price, I still don't mind you know tossing him in there. But this is an interesting five-man stack. I feel like it's on the cheaper side with some of those guys like Pierce and Pilar. Um, and I think, I mean, ballpark's a plus. Uh, Blake Snell's a guy that I don't mind targeting. Um, he, he's a guy who also walks a ton of bats. So, um, you know, we're going to get a couple of base runners for some of those big guys like Smoke and um, Donaldson. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't know what happened with uh, Blake Snell, but coming into this year, they, the Rays were really counting on him, and he hasn't really had a good year. So I don't know if he's going to be uh, what they expected to be. Um, but like you said, Donaldson's really heating up right now, and you have a bunch of righties in there who can hit lefties well. So, and, Smoke has been on fire all year, which is good to see. Yeah, yeah. It's now like 352 Woba to righties, 41% fly ball rate. That's scary in this ballpark, 34% hard contact. Um, I'm kind of hoping, I mean, I, obviously Dalton's going to be probably your higher own guy, but I, I think outside of that, everyone else should come in pretty low owned. Yeah, a absolutely. Um, Donaldson always is highly owned, especially recently he's been doing well. Um, but a lot of people just don't think about the – Blue Jays stacked this year just because they burned a lot of people. So you could get them pretty low. Yeah, definitely full slate, especially with cores. And we don't really talk about cores. Um, you know, we usually don't often on the stack. But uh, two lefties there, um, I see it as more kind of a one-off game than I do uh, stacking. Yeah, I'm not super thrilled by this cores game. Maybe tomorrow we'll have a better matchup. But today, I'm not really into it. No, I mean, two lefties, I mean, I, you know, I obviously don't mind some of the right-handed bats, but um, I'm not going to get them all lined up for a stack. Nope, nope, nope. You never really want to do that with Atlanta. No, so. Uh, who do you got? Who, do you, who scores the most runs tonight outside of cores? Outside of cores. That's a tough question. Um, I don't know. What do, what do you got? I'm, I'm going to go with Cleveland. I think they put the punishment on Minnesota. Yeah, I was going to say that, but I didn't want to copy you. So I'm going to just stay <laughs> away from that. Um, but one of my teams who I just sort of missed my stacking would kind of be the uh, Nationals. I think they might uh, score the most. They I know they're without Bryce, but and it's against lefty, which kind of hurts. But Rendon has absolutely killed lefties in his career, and uh, they got a few other righties in there like Zimmerman who could do some damage. 
it's in the Nats park. So I think they have a chance to really do some uh, wonders tonight as well, but I'm just not super safe with them. Yeah, no, I definitely don't mind those. I mean, as you mentioned, those guys that do mash lefties, um, you know, obviously Harper's out, but I think Murphy's ever been red down Kendrick's an interesting way to go. Yeah, absolutely. I think Kendrick, uh, for his price tag, he's been okay so far ever since the trade. So I don't mind him too. No, I'm with you. So that's going to wrap it up for us. You can head over to dailyfantasycafe.com, check out the great tools and content.